Hi, everybody. Great to be here and uh, many thanks to the organisers for the opportunity to speak to you all today. My name is Emma Hart. I am a conservation ecologist and I run a company called Habitats.ie. And within Habitats.ie, both myself and the team here work to research the truly fascinating um, behaviour of our native wildlife. And we use the insights we gain through that research to help to conserve and protect nature and biodiversity. So a little bit about my background. I've always been fascinated by the incredible array of life that we share this planet with. I've worked across uh, a variety of different countries, including spending time in Uganda, South Africa and Namibia. And the, um, the extreme privilege of, of spending this time immersed in wild landscapes gave me firsthand experience of wild nature. Um, and of also of living in places where humans have existed for hundreds of thousands of years, but have not yet dominated the landscape, but rather they continue to exist in a way that's left room for nature to thrive. Um, and I returned to Ireland a few years ago and I now work in a place called Oyster Haven on the southwest coast of County Cork, uh, where through Habitats.ie, I manage a 50 acre biodiversity reserve, which you can see in the background of this slide here, and a research centre where our team works to help other people across Ireland who are hoping to conserve nature um, uh, through, um, and we do that through both education and also through helping people to design biodiversity action plans, um, which will help them to boost biodiversity on their land, be that a, a farm or a park or a community space or, or a garden um, and across all of our green spaces really in Ireland. So today I'm going to talk to you briefly about the beautiful, unique, but very fragile web of life um, of which we're all a part. And in particular, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about how understanding um, a small bit about ecology and biodiversity can really help us to better understand how nature will be affected by climate change and what we can each do now, today, to protect it. So ecology in the simplest of terms is the study of how life on earth, including all of us, interacts with its environment. We all rely on other living things to support us. For example, this is a picture of a common blue butterfly on the reserve here in Oyster Haven. And before it was able to spread those exquisite blue wings, this butterfly existed as a bright green caterpillar and it, it, it needed to feed uh, on, a, on another bright, brightly coloured uh, yellow flowered plant called bird's foot trefoil, which you can see here in the top right hand corner. And as a butterfly, the common blue would have flown about the meadows, alighting on flowers to drink nectar, and thus providing a crucial pollinating service to a wide variety of plants and trees across the, across the habitat. At the end of its life, perhaps it fell prey to a hungry bird, such as this blue tit here. Maybe the blue tit fed, fed the butterfly to, to a hungry chick. And later on, those chicks, when they fledged, may in turn have fed on the seed produced by the bright yellow bird's foot trefoil plant, and thereby carried the seed to new locations and ultimately created brand new habitats for the future caterpillars of the common blue butterfly. And this is a relatively simple example of how when we start thinking ecologically, we realize that all living things are interconnected. I think the conservationist John Muir put it best when he said, when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe. And all of this interrelated, interconnected, complex life on Earth is what we refer to as biodiversity. And biodiversity is the variety of all life on Earth. From the domestic cattle you see here in the foreground to the wild fox in the background, from the flowers in a meadow to the tiniest organisms living in soil or water, biodiversity is the astounding, beautiful and complex variety of all life on our planet. And these complex webs of biodiversity, where species interact with and rely on each other to survive, are what we call ecosystems. Ecosystems are communities of organisms that live together in a specific environment. For example, woodlands, wetlands and grasslands all support different communities of species. So they are, they are referred to as separate ecosystems. And as well as supporting our native wildlife, these ecosystems can actually provide a wide range of services to humans. 
For example, we rely on healthy woodlands to create clean air for us to breathe, while healthy waterways can purify our drinking water. Likewise, um, healthy communities of pollinating insects, uh, like this bumblebee here, are responsible for helping us to produce up to three quarters of our food crops worldwide, including the apple or the tomato that you might have for lunch today. And crucially, healthy ecosystems also capture and store carbon. So making them one of the most powerful tools we have in terms of tackling the climate crisis. And these services that nature freely provides are known as ecosystem services. And these are crucial to our health and well-being on this planet. But as you're all aware, our ecosystems are in trouble. There's a dangerous decline in biodiversity around the world. In the last 50 years alone, wildlife populations have plunged by an incredible average of almost 70%. In Ireland too, nature is in trouble. For example, research has shown that our butterfly population has declined by 35% in just 15 years. Over half of our wild bee, wild bird and wild plant species are in ongoing decline. And overall, one in every five species that are monitored in Ireland are now under threat of extinction. And this not only threatens to wipe out the beauty and complexity of nature's show on Earth, but it also threatens the life support systems that allow us to live on this planet. And the reason for this decline is simple. As a society, we're not leaving enough space for healthy, natural, unpolluted ecosystems to exist. We are not leaving enough space for nature to exist. And as we look to the future, predictions suggest that climate change will put even more pressure on our remaining ecosystems, with weather patterns changing too quickly for many species to adapt. For example, it's predicted that a global temperature rise of just two degrees will cause 99% of our coral reefs to disappear. So what can we do? Well, we're far from a hopeless situation yet. There's still time to turn this around, but that time is rapidly running out and we have to start today. Luckily, simple actions can make a big difference. You don't need to own a lot of land to provide space for biodiversity. If you have a garden, you can make it a wildlife haven by just avoiding the use of harmful sprays and by letting it become a little bit wilder. For example, simply reducing how frequently you cut your grass can allow uh, plants in your, in your lawn to flower, like the bird's foot trefoil, um, and therefore to provide a crucial source of food for pollinating insects like the bumblebee and the common, common blue butterfly. In your schools and across your communities, you can think about how you can make, make your green spaces more wildlife friendly. Um, and if you don't know where to start, get online. There are so many fantastic organizations now with great online presence. Um, and you could link up with one of these organizations that are carrying out actions in your area. Offer your time as a volunteer. Learn where you can. Small actions taken by these groups are having a huge impact on our communities and on our wildlife. So, for example, um, restoration of peatlands in the Midlands means that the common crane has returned to breed in Ireland for the first time in 300 years. A ban on the poison strychnine in the 1990s means that buzzards have returned to our skies again. And they've recently been joined by reintroduced red kites and by the enormous white-tailed sea eagles, which have a wingspan of over four metres. Reduced persecution since the 1980s means that pine martens have made a tremendous comeback to our woodlands. And as an added bonus, pine martens have helped to act as a control on the invasive grey squirrel population in Ireland, which has allowed our native red squirrel to also stage a comeback. And each of these species play a key role in maintaining the health of our ecosystems. And all of these conservation successes are ultimately down to the inspiration and cooperation of individuals and communities in Ireland who have had enough of watching wildlife decline and are determined to turn the tide and protect and restore Ireland's ecosystems. And on our own reserve uh, here in Oyster Haven, it's also been incredible to watch wildlife return as we moved away from intensive management towards letting wildlife take the lead and creating more space for nature. For example, we've recorded over 70 species of wild bird on the site 
as well as countless other species of plants, mammals, insects, and fungi that make up an increasingly healthy functioning web of life. Nature can recover if given half a chance. So let's focus on what we can achieve and keep building the momentum. Thank you.